What's up guys, Jay here and welcome to another DRG guide video. Today we're going to talk about something that is common to encounter but many people don't know the fine details of what happens with them. So we're going to go over the details of the different mutators that can happen when playing missions. We're going to talk about the mutators on a base level as well as what they do and then go through all of them and talk about how you can prepare yourself for them and some strategies to help manage them a lot easier. So if you guys are ready, let's talk about the factors that can make an easy mission hard or a hard mission easy, the mutators system. By the way, if you guys want to see more gaming videos, subscribe to the channel, that way it's easier to find my content. The mission is ready, the pod is prepped, get on board the drop pod. So first, before we go into the list, let's go over what the mutator system is exactly and what they do. Mutators are essentially mission modifiers that add various elements that can make any mission you are going through potentially easier or harder depending on the one you get. When you bring up the mission select terminal, you will see red or yellow symbols attached to the mission icons, telling you that a specific mission has mutators applied to it. Now, not every mutator is necessarily bad for you. To understand which ones to look out for, you need to know the two different types of mutators, Warnings and Anomalies Warnings are designed to make missions harder in various ways. They add another layer of difficulty to the mission aside from its normal difficulty with the reward of an increased hazard bonus. If you are unaware, the hazard bonus multiplies the gold, minerals, and experience you get during a mission. Warnings can add anywhere from 15 to 50% to the hazard bonus, so even though they may be tough to go through, they may be worth muscling through if the conditions are right for those extra bonuses. Anomalies, on the other hand, are designed to change gameplay in either beneficial or neutral ways to the players. In some cases giving you advantages in the mission but with the trade-off that you will not get any hazard bonuses. Even though this is the case, some of the anomalies are bonuses in themselves so it works out. At the time of making this video, currently a mission can have at most two warnings and one anomaly applied to it, making for some very interesting gameplay combinations. Now that we have all of that covered, let's go through the full list of mutators from top to bottom. Let's start with the anomalies since there are less of them and they are for the most part simpler to talk about. First up, we have Critical Weakness, which makes hitting an enemy's weak spot deal five times as much damage, compared to the usual double or triple damage. It doesn't apply to creatures that don't have a weak spot, however, like loot bugs. It also doesn't apply to Dreadnoughts, unfortunately. I guess they don't want us to be able to just delete them with too much ease. Also, one last note is that it only applies to instant single target damage, so damage over time effects like the Driller's Flamethrower won't get the bonus critical. Up next is Low Gravity. With this one, gravity is lower than normal, allowing for higher jumps and making falling safer, though falling from extreme heights or at extreme speeds can still cause fall damage. There are a few other things that are affected by this mutator, like being able to throw your flares much further and the scout being able to use his grapple to perform long jumps. Ultimately, this one basically makes it easier to move around the cave system. Next up is Double XP. This one is pretty simple to explain as it simply doubles the amount of experience you get at the end of a mission. Completing secondary objectives, completing random events, and collecting as many minerals as possible all help contribute to this, so make sure you do as much as you can in these missions to get the full benefit. Next is Gold Rush, which is also very easy to explain as it makes the gold veins that you find in the cave twice as large as normal, meaning you will get a significantly higher payout. Side note, if you ever get the pots of gold brew from the Abyss Bar, try to find a mission with this mutator and leave a comment saying how much gold you got. Next we have Golden Bugs, which is similar to Gold Rush in that it helps you get paid. Simply put, every enemy you pop will drop gold, and I mean everything. From Swarmers to Dreadnoughts to Rival Bots, they will all drop gold, so this is another way to fill your wallets fast. Side note, the Pots of Gold Brew does not work with this one because it only applies to gold that you physically mine. Also, make sure you pack deep pockets when this one is active because you're going to be filled up very quickly. Next we have Rich Atmosphere, which makes the movement speed for players increase by 50% and allows for sprinting through environmental slows such as blizzards and sandstorms. Also, all of the players' voices are 50% higher pitched, which is really funny to just listen to. Damn those ceiling bugs. Mineral Mania is our next one, and it makes a biome's corresponding resources show up more frequently. So if you are on the salt pits, for example, you will see a lot more bismore and ender pearls in the terrain. This is another simple one as it just gives you more to collect during the missions. Lastly, we have Volatile Guts, which makes it so that when an enemy is killed, it instantly explodes, causing damage to anything nearby. Bigger enemies produce bigger, more damaging explosions. Conversely, tiny enemies like the Swarmers and NATO Sight Shockers, as well as stationary threats like the Spitball Infectors, are unaffected by Volatile Guts and will not explode when killed. Explosions can cause chain reactions, which can be very fun to watch. Now that we've covered all the fun ones, it's time to talk about the more dangerous mutators. For this section, we're going to talk about what they do and how much of a hazard bonus they provide, as well as how you can prepare yourself to make going through these mutators much easier. 
First up, we have Cave Leech Cluster, which provides a 15% hazard bonus. This causes cave leeches to spawn in much higher numbers and are usually packed together. Sometimes they can potentially wipe out an entire team if all players are ensnared simultaneously without an alternate means of escape. This can be a difficult one to prepare for since the leeches can be really anywhere on the ceiling. The best way to be prepared is to stick together in a group so that you can save your teammates if needed. Also, having a few team members with the heightened senses perk can be really useful for clutch saves. Next is Rival Presence, which gives you a 30% hazard bonus. This causes patrol bots and other rival tech enemies to spawn in the mission. Also, Burst, Sniper, and Repulsion turrets are spawned around a turret control unit somewhere in the cave. If the central unit is hacked, then all turrets are destroyed. This one just requires you to be prepared for a different type of enemy. You can bring more fire damage options since the bots are instantly killed if set on fire. Also, shock effects are great at doing high damage to them as well. One last note, these mutators can increase the chance of you encountering a nemesis so good luck if you run into one of those. Next, we have Elite Threat, which gives a 30% hazard bonus. This causes elite enemies to spawn during the mission. These are stronger variants of enemies that resist more damage, move faster, and have different behavior. They are marked by a red aura around them, a larger size, and an elite title above their name and health bar. There really is no specific way to prepare for this warning other than making sure to focus on any elite enemy that spawns. The gunner and scout should take priority in weakening and eliminating these elite threats with their equipment. There's nothing more terrifying than turning a corner and seeing an elite oppressor looking at you. Just take it slow and stick together and you should be okay. Up next, we have Haunted Cave, which gives a 30% hazard bonus. The ghost of an angry bulk detonator known as the Unknown Horror will pursue the entire team throughout the whole mission. It spawns a few moments after the drop pod lands and it can even dig through terrain to get to its target. A ghostly aura and unsettling sounds surround the monster, increasing in intensity as you get closer to it. Now this one can be a real pain in the- oh. This can be a big one for players because the Phantom Dreadnought cannot be killed and there is no way to escape it. It deals slightly reduced damage compared to the standard detonator. Importantly, while it can't be stopped or killed, it is vulnerable to slowing effects like electrocution. This is one of the mutators that is probably a lot of people's least favorite simply because you have to keep moving. The best way to handle this warning is to just keep moving and don't stay in one place for too long. The Phantom is not too fast, so you can get around it relatively easily. Having a scout with the IFG grenade or an engineer with the Voltaic SMG can slow it down, making it easier to manage. If you have a mission that requires you to stay in one place, like an on-site refining, then you have to get a bit more creative with your movement. One last important note is that you cannot get this mutator on salvage operation or escort duty missions. Next is Lethal Enemies, which gives you a 25% hazard bonus. This one is a lot simpler to explain. It causes all melee damage dealt by enemies to be doubled. Specifically, this means jump, bite, slash, carve, and dig attacks. Funny enough, area of effect stomps usually cause damage of another type than melee, such as kinetic or explosive. It's hard to explain, but basically melee and kinetic damage are two different things. Projectile attacks from Mactera spawn and Glyphid Acid Spitters are not affected by lethal enemies. Preparing for this one is similar to Elite Threat. Stay close to your team and keep the pressure on the enemy whenever possible. The enemies may do more damage, but they take the same amount of damage, so try to take them out before they get to you and you should be okay. Next up is Exploder Infestation, which gives a 20% hazard bonus. This one makes it so that every so often a pack of Glyphid Exploders will rush the players. These Exploder Swarms are made independently of normal enemy spawning and swarms. So one thing to keep in mind when this one is active is that somehow these Exploders are incredibly stealthy for no reason. When you hear the sound of creatures unburrowing themselves followed by silence, this usually indicates that a pack of roaming Exploders has just spawned. The best way to prepare for this mutator is to not rush too fast through the cave system and avoid running into exploder swarms. Keep your ears peeled and stick together and you should be just fine. Up next is Regenerative Bugs, which gives you a 15% hazard bonus. This makes it so that any damaged enemy is capable of regenerating health if it goes without taking damage for a few seconds. The regeneration will be halted for a few seconds every time the bug is damaged again by any source. Certain enemies will not regenerate health, like the Glyphid Brood Nexus, Bulk Detonators, and Dreadnoughts. This one can be countered in a similar way to Lethal Enemies, by keeping constant pressure on the enemy bugs. You need to keep up damage, especially on the bigger enemies like the Praetorians and Oppressors. Damage over time effects like Burn and poison are great here because it gives the bugs less time to start to heal. One last fun thing to note is that bugs captured with the Beastmaster perk will still keep the regenerating health, so you can actually turn this mutator into an advantage. 
Next, we have Parasites, which gives you a 15% hazard bonus. This one is probably my least favorite, not because it's necessarily hard, but because it's just gross. Basically, enemies are infected with disgusting carnivorous larvae, which will burst out and attack when their hosts are killed. Larger enemies, such as the Praetorians, will spawn three parasites on death. Tiny enemies, like the Swarmers and Shockers, do not contain any parasites, however. The parasites are similar to a Swarmer in terms of strength, but slightly less durable. They deal low damage and can be killed with just a single swing of the pickaxe. Parasites cannot survive for long outside of their hosts and will die after performing a suicidal leaping attack. To make it even worse, parasites are able to pass through the gunner's bubble shield. This one really isn't that bad and you really just need a few extra shots after killing each enemy. Using large AoE weapons like the gunner's incendiary grenades or the engineer's turrets can make short work of the parasite enemies. Our next warning is low oxygen and it gives you a 20% hazard bonus. This is another one that people may struggle with similar to the haunted cave. Essentially, the cave has toxic air and the player only gets a limited oxygen supply indicated by a bar on the side of the screen. A full tank of oxygen lasts for approximately a minute, being depleted at a steady rate with increasingly frantic beeps sounding as the supply begins to run out. Should this happen, you will start rapidly taking damage every second until you eventually go down. Oxygen is refilled by staying near blue O2 pods. These can be found on the drop pod, resupply pods, the mine head, or even molly. This one can be very stressful because you have to be very mindful of where you are at all times relative to oxygen. Oxygen pods. If you're doing a mission like point extractions or salvage operations, make sure to stay somewhat close to the mine head or pod and always have a path in mind to quickly get back if needed. If you're on a mission with Molly, make sure to get in the habit of calling her to your location very often. If you are playing with a group, make sure to stick together even more than usual. Make extra care to collect nitro because the resupply pods can double as oxygen stations if needed. Next is Mactera Plague, which gives you a 20% hazard bonus. This one is very simple to explain because it just makes the bulk of enemies spawned into Mactera breed enemies. So spawns, bombers, tri-jaws, grundles, and grabbers are the main force you will be fighting, with other bug types only appearing occasionally or during swarms. There really isn't a specific way to prepare for this one other than just make sure to keep your eyes in the sky. The driller's cryo cannon and scout's cryo grenades can be very useful here since it causes flying enemies to die instantly if frozen. Our next one is Shield Disruptor, which gives you a 30% hazard bonus. With this mutator, shields are permanently disabled by an electric field covering the entire map. However, to make it not totally unfair, players take 30% less damage from enemy attacks and terrain hazards. However, friendly fire and self-damage is not affected by this, so make sure to be careful not to hit your friends. This also makes the shield link perk effectively useless here, so make sure you're not like me and have it on during one of these missions. The best practice for these is to run something like Sweet Tooth to make Red Sugar more effective and rationed better. Also, resupplier can be useful since you gain extra health from supply pods. Last on our list is Lithophage Outbreak, which gives you a whopping 50% hazard bonus. This is probably the most complex one we have because it actually adds core objectives to the mission that you're on. These cause the caves to be infected with up to three contagion spikes. To remove them, you need to call a cleansing pod containing two unique tools. The lithofomer is used to foam the yellow spots around the main spike, and the lithovac is used to vacuum the foam spots to destroy them. Repeat the operation until the spike is cleansed, indicated by the red symbol on the screen being completely dry. Trained. When near the spikes, infected rock pox grunts, praetorians, and larvae will spawn around to defend them. This one has a lot of parts to it, and the best way to handle it is to simply go through the mission as normal, and more than likely you'll find the spikes on your pathway. However, sometimes they might be stuck in hard to reach places, so make sure you explore the cave as best you can. Just be careful not to stand in the rock pox for too long, and cover the spikes effectively, and you'll be good to go. Well, that was a lot of information to get through. Sorry that took a while, but there are a lot of different mutators, and as you now know, some of them are rather complex and require some careful planning to manage. The mutators can make certain missions easier or harder depending on how you handle them. The most important thing to do when dealing with mutators is to set up your loadout beforehand. Look at the mission type, the mutators, and even the biome, and make sure that you and your team have the right setup for the job. Bring fire for those healing bugs, slows for that annoying ghost bug, and deeper pockets to collect all that gold from those dead bugs. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time for another video.